Monday the 27th of March 2023. First reading. Reading from the book of Daniel. In Babylon there lived a man named Jochim. He had married Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, a woman of great beauty, and she was God-fearing because her parents were worthy people and had instructed their daughter in the law of Moses. Jochim was a very rich man and had a garden attached to his house. The Jews would often visit him since he was held in greater respect than any other man. Two elderly men had been selected from the people that year to act as judges. Of such the Lord said, Wickedness has come to Babylon through the elders, and judges posing as guides to the people. These men were often at Jochum's house, and all who were engaged in litigation used to come to them. At midday, when everyone had gone, Susanna used to take a walk in her husband's garden. The two elders, who used to watch her every day as she came in to take her walk, gradually began to desire her. They threw reason aside, making no effort to turn their eyes to heaven and forgetting its demands of virtue. So they waited for a favourable moment and one day Susanna came as usual, accompanied only by two young maidservants. The day was hot and she wanted to bathe in the garden. There was no one about except the two elders, spying on her from their hiding place. She said to the servants, bring me some oil and balsam and shut the garden door while I bathe. Hardly were the servants gone than the two elders were there after her. Look, they said the garden door is shut, no one can see us. We want to have you, so give in and let us. Refuse and we will both give evidence that a young man was with you and that was why you sent your maids away. Susanna sighed. I am trapped, she said whatever I do. If I agree, that means my death. If I resist, I cannot get away from you. But I prefer to fall innocent into your power than to sin in the eyes of the Lord. Then she cried out as loud as she could. The two elders began shouting too, putting the blame on her, and one of them ran to open the garden door. The household, hearing the shouting in the garden, rushed out by the side entrance to see what was happening. Once the elders had told their story, the servants were thoroughly taken aback since nothing of this sort had ever been said of Susanna. Next day a meeting was held at the house of her husband Jochum. The two elders arrived and their vindictiveness determined to have her put to death. They addressed the company, summoned Susanna daughter of Hilkiah and wife of Jochum. She was sent for and came accompanied by her parents, her children and all her relations. All her own people were weeping and so were all the others who saw her. The two elders stood up with all the people round them and laid their hands on the woman's head. Tearfully she turned her eyes to heaven, her heart confident in God. The elders then spoke. While we were walking by ourselves in the garden, this woman arrived with two servants. She shut the garden door and then dismissed the servants. A young man who had been hiding went over to her and they lay down together. From the end of the garden where we were, we saw this crime taking place and hurried towards them. Though we saw them together, we were unable to catch the man. He was too strong for us. He opened the door and took to his heels. We did, however, catch this woman and ask her who the young man was. She refused to tell us. That is our evidence. Since they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly took their word. Susanna was condemned to death. She cried out as loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that they have given false evidence against me. And now have I to die, innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me. The Lord heard her cry and as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit residing in a young boy named Daniel who began to shout, I am innocent of this woman's death at which all the people turned to him and asked, What do you mean by these words? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, Are you so stupid, sons of Israel, as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard, and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. All the people hurried back, and the elders said to Daniel, Come, and sit with us, and tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. Daniel said, Keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. 
You have grown old in wickedness. He said, and now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you. You with your unjust judgments, your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of guilty men, when the Lord has said, you must not put the innocent and the just to death. Now then, since you saw her so clearly, tell me what tree you saw them lying under, he replied, under a mastic tree. Daniel said, true enough. Your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God has already received your sentence from him and will slash you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought, and said to him, Spawn of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel, and they were too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then, tell me what tree you surprised them under, he replied, under a home oak. Daniel said, true enough. Your lie recalls on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with a sword to drive home and spit you and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, blessing God, the savior of those who trust in him. And they turned on the two elders whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As prescribed in the law of Moses, they sentenced them to the same punishment as they had intended to inflict on their neighbor. They put them to death. The life of an innocent woman was spared that day. Responsorial Psalm If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Their restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. Gospel Acclamation Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. Now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. Gospel Reading from the book of John Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak he appeared in the temple again, and as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery and making her stand there in full view of everybody. They said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery and Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one. So she replied, Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus, go away, and do not sin any more. Gospel of the Lord. <laughs>